Guess what today is? It's Finished Friday. I'm holding my breath, guys, because I wanna make sure that I have internet connection, that you can hear me, and that we're not going to cut off. So I'm gonna give it just a minute to make sure that we go live and that you can see me. So as you pop on, say hey. Yes, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Hey, Debbie, hey, Jan. Hey, two other people watching, how's it going? Happy spring, we're almost into summer, and guess what? I am standing in my kitchen, over near the window, <laughs> closest, thinking I will get decent reception, so that way I can show you, hey, sweet Donna, that I can show you, hey, Vicki, hey, girl, I can show you how to create this finish. I'm just gonna tell you, I love this finish. Hey, Becky, hello. Hey, Leslie. It is, it's Finish Friday, and people are probably watching this later going, doesn't she know? I even, it, here's what's funny. Somebody did say this. It was on YouTube, and they were like, Don't, doesn't she know that people are gonna watch this and it's not Friday? Um, mm -hmm, I do, but it's Friday now. I'm showing you on Friday, and it rhymes with finish, or it sounds like it, it doesn't rhyme, but it, it's good, it's all good, so that's why I say Finish Friday. Hey, Gretchen, hey, Ashley, hey, guys. Just as you pop on here, say, hey, thanks, Irene. It, is it not to die for? I mean, what blue doesn't make you happy? It just does. And this is a fabulous finish that you're going to be able to do on a piece of furniture because I'm going to show you today. All right, so I, hold your breath for me. If we start buffering or if we have an issue, let's just hope that everything goes okay. All right, so let me just show you. What did I start with when I was doing this finish? Now, those of you... Thank you, Rose, what a sweet comment. I have, we finished up my Old World finishing um, course last month, last night, and I will have to tell you, I shed a couple of tears, and what a sweet, sweet group of people that love doing finishes. And I told them, I was like, I'm gonna be introducing a new stencil today, and I'm gonna be showing you how to create this finish. Because I started with just plain wood. Now. We got these wood boards at Michael's for like $6.99 for a pack of six. Five for $8.99. Five for $8.99. These are great because I always send you to Habitat or Goodwill to get doors. But guys, these are birch. Look, you can do them on both sides. So those of you that are putting together finished samples to be able to show clients or even maybe for yourself. Hey, Lisa, how's it going? Um, these are perfect for, so, oh, Laurie, so glad you like the process. Hey, Ina, hey, hey, Laurie, hey, everybody. So, here's the drill. Maybe you're, maybe you're seeing this for the first time and she's, and you're like, who is this crazy woman and why is she in a kitchen and why is she holding boards up showing me? My name is Amy Howard and I am the mother maker with Amy Howard at Home. I develop and we manufacture the products that you see that I show you how to use because I want to be able to show you how to craft a more beautiful life. And specifically, these are great looking finishes that you can put onto furniture. So you can get these boards and work on them and that's what I'm gonna start with today. So it'd be a great way to be able to give you a sample board of what your piece will look like and then that way you can execute it on your piece. Always do it on a finished sample board first or something that doesn't matter and then that way you can decide it's like I love this I love the color it's perfect then you transfer it onto the actual piece of furniture that you're gonna be painting all right so if you've never watched us before when I do these on finished Friday if you share the video your name goes in for a drawing and all day Friday all day Saturday all day Sunday and Monday everybody's names are put into a database and we select one winner guess what this winner is gonna winner, gonna win you're gonna to wanna to share this video because, guess what? Let me show you. Are you ready for this? Now, I'm just gonna tell you. If I'd had this years ago when I was doing furniture and I was having to paint everything by hand, I would've think I died and went to heaven. Finishing heaven. Are you ready? Look at this. It's the best. Guys, look at this. Look. You've got egg and dart. This is called rolling coin. 
This is a Greek key. This is a trim that you've seen on a lot of very classical furniture pieces. This is another Greek key, an egg and dart. A larger, another rolling coin. Look at this, are these so fab? Guess what? This is an adhesive stencil that you, I'm gonna show you today how you can use this on your piece of furniture and zippity doo dah, you've got a Greek key across the framework of it. Maybe you even come back and you could use this on a frame that's got a flat surface here. You could use this to add detail, maybe on drawers that you don't have any detail on. Pop, this is it, so easy. I mean, it's like, it's just made your refinishing work so much easier. Do you love it? Tell me you love it. Tell me you think I don't, I haven't lost my mind and that you're, you're, you're like a brother or sister from another mother that you love it too. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside because when I get ready to, sh to show you that part, that's where I got this detail from. Look at this. It's like, boom, done. So easy, so easy. All right, so let me show you how to go from, Stephanie, thank you. Look, how to go from this, let's go back just a little bit more. How to go from just plain raw wood to this. Okay, so glad you love it. That just makes me, how does it work? I'm getting ready to show you. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this down and I'm gonna, I've got my laptop over here, I'll be able to see you. And I'm literally crammed up against my countertop where I cook supper and Gene Howard cooks breakfast and his cappuccino machine. I don't know what you're gonna see when I turn this down but I wanna be able to take you through. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do, if you're working on a raw piece of furniture, you can follow what I'm doing. If you're working on an existing piece that you wanna be able to get this finish, you need to put some one step on it. I would probably just clean it with clean slate and then put on a coat, one thin coat of Bauhaus buff. And then we can start at this first finish, all right? So I'm gonna turn this down, continue to say hey, and then share the video. Your name will go in for that drawing, but I love seeing where you're tuning in from and you can ask me questions and I'll answer them. So I'm gonna turn this down. I'm gonna have to say bye for just a minute because I want you to be able to see exactly what it is that I'm doing. And then that way, that's the teacher in me, guys. You're gonna be able to tell. So I'm gonna look over here and make sure. Now, like, I don't know that this is helping me a whole lot, but I've got some paper towels down here on my counter. So if Gene Howard is watching, he's not gonna come home and go, Amy D, why are you putting stuff on our counter? Did anybody else's mama or daddy call them by their middle name when they were in trouble? Gene Howard still does that. All right, so what we're gonna start with, this is some of this, just, it, it's birch. It's, it's a great sample. And we got these at Michael's and they're raw, so it allows me to be able to make great looking finished samples to show you. So the first product we're gonna start with is my Venetian plaster. So now I'm gonna take, I've got these little cups and little spoons, and I'm gonna mix this up and I wanna be able to show you. The second thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need my Toscana Riviera Blue. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my Venetian plaster and I'm tinting it with my milk paint. So, I'm gonna put three parts Venetian plaster in. It's kinda like cooking, guys. There again, Venetian plaster. And then in order to get some color to it, I'm taking my Riviera Blue. It's open. Open. All right. And this is going to allow me to be able to have some color. So when you're mixing your plaster and your milk paint for color, you want you do want to work um, in a dry form. It's best that way. Now, if you want to work wet to wet, you can. But I'm just trying to teach you as your mother maker what will work. I'm gonna add just a little bit more because I want it just a little bit more of a blue green. You can mix milk paint with Venetian plaster. A lot of people don't realize that. As you pop on here, guys, say hey. All right, so now I'm making a mess. Just dust this off. I'm 
going to get a little bit of water from my kitchen sink. And I'm gonna pour it in here and mix it up. Now, the consistency that you're gonna go for with this is gonna be kind of like sour cream. So everybody's going, oh, okay, I get it. I know what sour cream's like. So you wanna just kind of mix this up, and I've already got some that we've mixed up that we had ready right before we went live. And I'm gonna pull it up right here. So you see the, let me show you, it really is kind of like sour cream. So this is a combination of milk paint and plaster. And it's nice and mixed up. Let you see the consistency. Now, I'm gonna put that on this board. Now, I do like working when I've got plaster. We like putting it on with just a trowel or um, a spatula. I'm gonna just do a dollop on this. And then I'm gonna spread it out. If you're working on a piece of furniture, again, if it's already got a factory finish on it, guys, let's be sure and put a coat of Bauhaus buff on it first. That's gonna act as a primer, it's gonna get the surface ready, and then that way we can come back with our plaster milk paint finish. And as you're applying it, you're going to be putting this on, basically do your top, then do your drawer. I believe it's pretty liquid-like, so it's gonna go on and flow out pretty evenly. And it's good to use the metal because the lime and the marble dust in the plaster loves the metal. It loves it. It's just like, oh, I'm so happy. It spreads out easier. And this is gonna dry fairly quickly. Now, believe it or not, this is because it's wet, it's gonna be a darker color. See how it lays out really nicely, even when I'll, I'll agitate it and look, it's just kind of flowing out. It's gonna do that on your piece as well. So I'm gonna set this aside. I will tell you, when I did it earlier, um, it, we, we dried it with a hairdryer. So it allows, this just kind of lets you see. It will continue to just kind of flow out and then just let it dry naturally. I'm gonna lay down another piece of paper towel on my kitchen counter. And then this is what it dried down to. So you saw how dark it was, and when it dries down, it's gonna to go to this light color. There's still some variance in it. I can see that blue showing up just a little bit, and I think that's very, very desirable. I like that. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you how a lot of pieces of furniture will have um, almost a glazed look or a shadowed look. So we could imagine if this small piece was my door or my drawer. I can go around it and kind of shadow it and halo it so it's gonna give a lot more depth. Now, the second step, step number two, we started with raw wood. If you have an existing piece, you're gonna paint Bauhaus buff after you clean it. Take your Riviera Blue and your Venetian Plaster Mixture and put it all over it. Now I'm gonna take a Moffy Coast milk paint and I'm gonna mix it with the same milk paint I used with my plaster, Riviera Blue. Now, I really, I encourage you guys, when I do these lessons, here's the deal. A lot of people don't want you to know this. A lot of finishers don't want you to know. These are things, this is my way of teaching you because I'm wanting to rise up. I want a group of people that love doing quality finishes, that wanna build a business from it, that wanna be able to do this for other people and for yourself that you've never seen before. But these are more techniques that are from the Renaissance. I actually worked in a bodega in Florence, Italy a lot of people don't realize that. And so the processes that I'm teaching you have been around for thousands of years. All right, so I mixed these two colors together. I did three parts, three parts of the um, Amalfi and added one part of the Riviera Blue and added just a tinge of black. Now you can make your color any color you want. This is in order to show you what I was doing today. This is what I used. Now, something else you're gonna notice, look at this. Can you see this stuck on the spoon? You know what that's from? That is from the fact that almost immediately after you mix this milk paint, it's gonna to start to settle to the bottom of your cup. So you're constantly going to be agitating it. Every time you're working with it, you wanna stir it just a little bit. And you may be like, 
that's too much trouble. No, it's not. Because the quality of the finish that you're able to get from this is much different than um, any of the other finishes that you're going to do. All right, so stick with me. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our natural seawool sponge. You'll see they're pretty large, and I will cut mine up into pieces like this. You don't need a whole big sponge. But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to work with this side. Can you, can you see where that's real prickly and it's small? I would prefer that you work with the side that's got a more open weave in it like this and not the prickly because it's not going to be as pretty of a finish. The other thing I want to make sure is that your sponge is wet. As they dry out, they're going to get harder, and I would prefer that you put it in water first and make it soft before you actually start working with it. So now I'm going to agitate my paint. Now here's the other thing. Make sure, this is fairly fresh plaster. We just did this. You don't need to do this step with the plaster and the milk paint and then let it dry for weeks because it's going to get too hard and, and this is fairly soft as far as the curing process. It's going to be a little bit easier to blend. So I'm just going to agitate my mixture of Amalfi Coast and Riviera Blue and I'm going to dip my sponge down in here. Now, remember what I was telling you? I'm trying to show you how you can halo a door. So this is my door. I'm going to kind of come around the edge come up around the top and you see how it's a little bit darker now I'm gonna get my paper towel I'm gonna soften this just a little bit I want you to work on one section at a time I don't want you to get too far off. This paint starts to just literally, let me wet this with my, by my sink. It's really good to be next to a water source. So I'm gonna come in here. Look how I'm wetting this and blending it coming to that edge and blending it into this area here. So look, it's going from dark to light. Is everybody with me? So yes, we're with you, Amy. So I'm taking this all the way up. I'm blending it. So now I've got a gradation from here all the way across. Now I'm gonna come back in where there's some little air open areas and I'm gonna close those up just a little bit. And then what am I closing it up with? I've got a damp, look at this. There's hardly any paint on it. I've got my damp seawall. And what's happening is starting to just kind of blend these colors. Now, right now it's wet. So it looks like it's got a lot more um, contrast, but it actually doesn't. Y'all are gonna have to listen to a hairdryer in just a second. Is that going to reach? I wish you could see. I realize with these screens, there's a lot of contrast. Now, I'm going to soften this just a little bit more, and then I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer. So I'm going to take you all the way through. All right, so bear with me. You're going to have to listen to a hair dryer for just a second. this in some water really quick. I want to get this off. How's everybody doing? Happy Friday. As you pop on here, tell me where you're tuning in from. 
If you've never tuned in before, this is what we call Finish Friday. My name's Amy Howard. I'm the mother maker with Amy Howard at Home and a Maker Studio. And I'm showing you how to create a true Venetian finish that you would see on furniture. Now, after this is kind of dried, I'm coming back and I'm burnishing this just a little bit. I'm doing this for what reason? I'm wanting to be able to get a little bit of distressing in it. And the other thing that you're gonna to start to see is I'm gonna get a little bit of sheen on it because that plaster loves metal. Let me hold this up. Can you start to see that sheen? Oh my gosh, it feels so good. OMG, so gorgeous. Even being able to mix that milk paint in it. Now look at the other thing I want you to notice that I'm doing. Look, I'm turning my trowel. I'm almost cross-hatching it. I'm not going and scraping down in long strokes or going across it. I'm blending it. And look what's happening. It's making that blue color kind of pop out. Is that not yummy? Yummy. Now, the variances, you know, on the um, on the screen, a lot of times it will play up the contrast, maybe sometimes a little too much, but if you saw this in person, you would absolutely love it. Here's one that I did earlier, and as it will start to dry down, it's gonna be softer. See right now how it's wet, and they're, they're much more contrasty, but as it starts to dry down, it's gonna go softer and much more subtle. Now, let me show you. Here's the magic. Are you ready for this? Now, I've got my stencil. If you've not worked with this before, these are pretty magical because it allows you to be able to do artwork without all the trouble. And you don't have to have any artistic experience or ability for that matter. So I love this one. I've cut that out. That's what's missing. Let me show you one with all of it again. So this is a design that I have used for myself. I've done the transfers, this, but this is a stencil. This is different. This is something that you can wash and you can use again and again and again. So if you've got a drawer or if you've got a piece of furniture that doesn't have much detail on it, guys, you've just hit jackpot because you can go in and go in and around the flat drawer and give so much detail and so much depth that you never thought you could do before. So I'm just cutting this out. You can cut this and save them. Of course, they're adhesive, so you can use them over and over again. You can rinse them. Now, I really do suggest trying to work with chalk art and gel inks to do this because it's gonna be a lot easier to be able to go on. So now the detail that I'm gonna add at the bottom of this, I'm gonna lay this across the base. Now, the thing that you're gonna to notice too, sorry, and I should have showed you, look at this. It has a backing on it. And the gray part is a mesh material. So you can, do you see my hand through that? Look, you can see through it. So it's a mesh and where the gray is, the chalk is not gonna go through. But to where it's open, that is my mesh material. So it allows me to almost silk screen this on top of the piece of furniture that I'm painting. So I'm gonna use my chalk art. It's called Dreamy Eyes from a maker studio. This is my sister company. Look at that color. Look at this color with this blue. Do you see why I chose it? Is it yummy? Yummy, 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 look at that. It's a little bit darker value. You could go with this, you could easily do um, a dark gray. Um, you could gild it if you wanted to, but I just thought doing this color, this dreamy eyes is really, really pretty. Now, here's what's so easy, guys. I'm just gonna take a spreader, we have these on the website, and I'm gonna load up just a little bit of this chalk art, all right? So now, and I'm just gonna start spreading it 
on my surface. Matter of fact, I may have a little bit too much. I'm gonna spread it down here just a little bit. And then at a 45 degree angle, you can see how I'm holding this. I'm gonna hold this at the top and then I'm gonna press it through here. I'm pressing it through to get it through to the other side. I could be working on a drawer. There's so many, I could be doing a picture frame. This is just gonna take your finishes and your art to a whole new level. I'm staying away from this edge over here. That's why I'm kind of taking my time. And I'm gonna flip it. Guys, if you're just now watching, um, we are gonna be giving this stencil away. All you have to do is share the video. And all day Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then on Monday, I'm trying to stay off of there, we are gonna take all the names and choose a lucky winner. And I'm gonna give this to you along with, I'm gonna pay for your shipping, and I'm gonna also put some milk paint in there because I want you to be able to create this finish. All right, so I'm gonna put the excess of the chalk art back into my container. And again, this color is called Dreamy Eyes. And now I'm gonna take the stencil and I'm gonna lift it. Look at this. Does it get any easier than this? Is this like the most fun you've ever had? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going back to my childhood. I, I hadn't had this much fun since I was probably eight or nine. This is the bomb. It shows you the easeability. Now, so look at look at your piece with this finish. You've got your artwork on there. Now think of some gorgeous gold hardware. Would this not be too die for? Guys, so, so fun, so easy. But also think about, now with this, all I need to do is put this in the sink and rinse it with water, lay it up like this and allow the adhesive side to dry and I can use it again and again. So now I've got all these opportunities I am loving. I tell you what, let's do this really quick. I just want you to see. Let's try, let's, I am getting all over my, look at this. Look at my hands. Am I a messy Marvin or what? All right, so let's just cut this Greek key. I want you guys to see this. So I'm cutting these out. It's really best with these designs to go on and cut Cut them out, that way you can use them all individually. There's my adhesive side. You can see all the way through it. And we'll just, tell you what, we'll just lay that Greek key right there. Make sure that you press it down. You wanna make sure that they bond, that they marry with one another. And again, I'm just gonna dip this in here very quickly. I just messed it up. I got some excess on outside of my line, which isn't any big deal. I'll be able to take some water and get that off. Loving that. Now, let me show you. On this little area right here, all I have to do is take a little bit of a wet rag and wipe that off. If I have any halo at all, I'll just lightly sand it and it's not gonna be any big deal. I am loving this. I hope you see how this can totally be a game changer. It's so funny. You know what I miss? Even though I love teaching you, and I love having this to where um, you can see me from, hey Tamara, that you can see my hands and what it is that I'm doing. I, I always love to see your comments. I love to see you get excited. I wanna be able to inspire you. I want you to be able to turn around and take your newfound skills and really create gorgeous, gorgeous pieces of furniture, so. There's nothing more fun 
than rescuing an old piece of furniture that you found on the side of the road. When I see people on our before and after page, if you're not part of it, go to the Amy Howard at Home before and after group on Facebook. And you may even see where people will take pictures where that piece of furniture was on the side of the road and they redid it. There's nothing more fun and more satisfying. But even if you go to an estate sale tomorrow, or even if you go to a garage sale, guys, you can take this old fruit wood, ugly furniture and transform it into looks like this. And who knows, you may even start a new business with it. I hope you have a fabulous Friday. I hope you love this weekend that you stop, then you slow down and enjoy the little things. I'll see you at the estate sales, everybody. Have a great weekend.